Hello everyone, welcome to another episode from Ampro Engineering. What we have here is one of the most beloved designs of all time from the RC car industry, and this happens to be based on the original Tamiya Bruiser. Now this particular car here is the HGP407, which is a complete and blatant copy of the re-release Bruiser, but we're going to ignore that for the time being because the upgrade that we have here is going to be for this truck here. What we have here is a truck that has a pretty ancient steering system here. The servo is mounted here in the battery box. Now for those of you youngsters out there, or at least anybody who's not familiar with this truck, it's based on the Tamiya Hilux. And this truck came out in the early 80s and had a little more of a sophisticated steering system, but in order to make things a little bit cheaper, they simplified it and basically ended up with a truck that had quite a lot of steering play. On top of that, there are quite a few linkages that do control the steering mechanism and it's simply unnecessary by today's standards. So what we're going to do is remove the plate here in the front, this little guy here, and replace it with this bracket here from Ampro. So we'll take the body off and I've already gone through the trouble of pulling it all out but it's fairly simple. In order to get around disassembling the entire chassis because you have to pull these rails apart, I simply undid a couple of the transmission mounts here as well as this mount for the body and it will give you enough play to pry the two halves of the chassis apart. So with this out, these two little spacer pieces out, we can now focus on this bracket here. It is highly recommended that all the holes here are tapped with an M3 tap. This part is nylon, but the reason I would recommend against self-tapping into these is that there are some fairly thin sidewalls here for the screws, and my concern is that if there is residual material in here from the 3D printing process and it's not properly cleaned out, that you could in fact split the sidewall by putting in a self-tapping screw. So again, I very much recommend tapping these with an M3. Every one of the holes on this has been tapped, and just note that this hole right here, this is a through hole, but behind it, it's tapped in here. This hole and this hole share the same region. You'll want to use a bottom tap in both of these so that you can get as much bite as possible. Now with this done, we can install it. Originally, of course, you had the sheet metal piece and then these two little plastic spacers went in here as to not compress this little metal hanger. Since we no longer have that issue, this piece just goes in straight away. The hanger will slot in between this little tab right here. Drop that in there. Pry that open just a tad and it'll slot right into place. Like that. We can then slip these in. One and uh, two. These used to have nuts on the inside. That is no longer the case because they are threaded holes now on this bracket. So we'll just use these screws to hold it in place. For the top screw, the standard one will be fine. And also note that when you are installing this, it's best not to torque anything down until everything is in. Oftentimes there's a little bit of play in these screw holes, not because of where the screw holes are placed, but where the sheet metal is finely bent. It's actually quite easy to place holes in flat sheet metal. It's not very easy to have the holes precisely end up where you want them once bent. These two screws can be replaced with 16 millimeter long M3 screws. Although a 14 millimeter would work, I still recommend the 16 millimeter. I've also gone ahead and thrown the bumper on, although this might make things a little trickier with the servo. I'm, I'm hoping that it won't. You're going to use the same hardware that came for the lower mounts down here. These final screws here on the inside, you'll want to use a 10 millimeter screw, but no larger. And please put a washer on it. It's very important that you do that. And just as a side note, this screw here went right in on this car, but on the right side, it did not. It's actually off by about a half a millimeter. And considering the fact that this is the HGP407, I have to attribute that to a warped mount. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just use an X-Acto knife and just kind of open that hole up just a little bit and maybe loosen this all up and kind of push down the bumper because it should be fitting. And with everything screwed in, it's now time to snug everything up. And remember that you don't need to over torque these. This nylon material is quite excellent at preventing screws from backing out. But if you are concerned, a very, very small dab of thread lock, and I mean very small, will help everything stay in place. Do not forget to re-thread in the screws that you undid to spread the chassis open. And let's drop the servo in. The good news is, the servo does fit when everything is installed. And what I'm going to do is currently the servo arm is on this side of the car and I'm gonna keep it there. So what I'm going to do is install the servo with the servo motor side furthest away. So if the servo connecting arm is as long as possible to help with steering geometry. And we can just fish the wire through the bottom. 
And with a little bit of finagling, it'll just pop right in place. I also wanted to note that I had to unsolder the motor wires and just aim them upward because otherwise they came into contact with the servo. The servo does have a good amount of play without hitting the motor, but it's very, very, very close. I'm gonna hold the servo in with a couple of screws and then we can begin to update the steering geometry. We're gonna pop off the turn buckle here. Next, we'll take off the entire knuckle because it'll be a little bit easier to access these screws on it. And there's just a screw on the bottom, a screw on the top, and make sure that you undo the ball end on the other side right here. We have to take off the little steering arm that resides on this hub, and we are going to replace it with this little guy. So this is a 3D printed aluminum replacement arm. Despite how light it is, I mean, it, it feels incredibly light just to kind of hold. In fact, it feels kind of cheap, but I assure you that the quality of these aluminum parts is very, very high. They're quite durable. If, but if you, of course, have a different way to attach the servo to the steering hub, then please, by all means, you're more than welcome to do that. But if you don't have an idea of how to do that, this is available. This is going to install in the exact same location as the original. The arm is ready for installation. I put the ball stud in with a lock nut at the bottom, and I put a little dab of thread lock just because I don't want it to back on, obviously. And with the M2 screws that came out, I'm gonna do the same thing. These hubs are cast aluminum, and they're not very durable at all, so the last thing you wanna do is over torque them. So just put some thread lock on it, and you'll be all set. Once it is installed, you can see it right there. You should get a full range of motion. Now this arm here will not come to contact with anything. So you see it does not hit the shock absorber. Though usually this truck does have the Ampro wheel spacer for the Bruiser. I've taken it out just to ensure clearance and you can see that there is no clearance issue. There's around three millimeters of clearance there so you shouldn't have any problems. Now we need to connect that to the servo. I've got the servo horn on the servo and, and please understand that this is just temporary. I've got a metal one on order, it just hasn't come in yet. Move that to the side. Fish it straight on in. And now I'll just put the four screws in to hold it in place. Went ahead and installed the servo with all four screws. Then I had this metal turnbuckle here, which I went ahead and threw on there. I just happened to get lucky and have one in my possession already. Center to center for this is about 71 millimeters. And the reason why I say about is because it really is gonna depend on where you have the ball in mounted to the servo horn, but it should be right about there. I think now it's time to put the other tire back on and plug the servo in. We've got the front end back together and I was actually messing with the steering. And that's all the play there is now. That's quite remarkable. Where's that play coming from? Oh, it's actually, the play is coming <laughs> from this kind of cheap turnbuckle. It looks like we may need to get a better one. But otherwise, it's, it's pretty solid now. Unfortunately, just so you know that this cable is too short, you will need to get a servo extension cable. These are usually available for airplanes and that will allow you to plug it into the receiver. Since we're here, you can go ahead and remove this lower servo access panel by taking off one, two, three, four screws, ignoring the one that appears to be a screw. To me, it has a sense of humor. And then you can pull out this servo here, which happens to be the steering servo. All right, the car is turned on now, and let's see how the servo works. I've never seen such accurate servo response. I am very excited to see this thing now. That's fantastic. I'm really happy to see this thing actually being able to steer now. That's gonna be fantastic. Well, that's it everyone. Remember that this upgrade is intended for the HGP407. The original Bruiser is currently unable to accept this because the original Bruiser uses this metal plate here that the Ampro center mount would replace to support the motor. So right now that's not acceptable for that vehicle, but we'll see what happens in the future. I just realized that I left that steering bell crank in there, so that's gonna have to go. Stay tuned, we have some more stuff for the Bruiser series. In fact, this ridiculous battery tray with the rubber band, yeah, we're not gonna do that anymore. Stay tuned and see what we come up. Thank you all so much for watching and we will see you next time.